So uh, let's get on with tonight's meeting. A few interesting things that have been happening this year, and we're going to touch on them a little bit later in our space news. Um, but uh, I just want to run through the program as we uh, speak tonight. We're going to be just giving a bit of an overview of what's happening in the association, some of the events that we've got uh, planned and things that might be coming up. Uh, then we're going to have a feature uh, looking back at Apollo 11 a few years ago. And then we're going to have a little bit of a break, have a chat with somebody you haven't met before, or going to have a drink, go and do something else, have a cigarette at the time if you want, if that's your passion. And then we're going to have some space news, they do, with uh, Michael and Angelo. Never enough time for the news that's going on, and uh, then we've got Andrew Levy with his Planet Journey and Science update, so that's all we've got. And then we, we uh, finish up here at 10 o'clock and roll out in the street uh, and see what happens for the rest of the evening. Um, so just a couple of things that are coming up. I don't have much details on these, but uh, we'll, we'll be bringing them forward to you later on. We're wanting to be involved with this. Obviously, the air show is on in February, uh, and the, uh, there's a space industry uh, conference happening in conjunction with that. Um, once again, at this stage, we're not involved, um, but uh, if anyone is, or there might be some opportunity, I'm not sure. So we'll keep you informed of that, just keep you on the email, etc. Um, there's also this thing that popped up in my feed, I don't know, it's uh, the Moon Village Association. It sounds a bit curious, but I don't know. So it's a big and edge here in Federation Square. And uh, so they're doing this uh, to mark the 50th anniversary, and they're going to have some speakers on the environment, mining, medical, space industry. Um, so, 2nd of March. So, there's a website, come to work. Um, no guarantees, I don't know anything about it, but I thought people might be. Right. Marjorie. Yes. 
list your cultural body reserves at the youth detention. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so as we have mentioned continuously, uh, 50 years this year <coughs> of Parliament 11, and of course that coincided with July 16 to 25 in Australia. So um, we at the association uh, are working on a few different channels. Uh, there is a uh, moon, what's called Moon Festival that you can get some here in Maribel, and they're running a series of movies over the week. Um, that list was kind of published in draft about six months ago. We've since been in touch with them because Michael had been in touch with various producers and people <coughs> putting together some pretty incredible films that are coming out uh, in conjunction with Apollo 11. And um, so we're talking to them about A, having them screen that as part of their festival, or B, and it will be practically association having a <coughs> screening event. So we'll keep you up to date on that. I've also approached the ABC um, uh, to maybe, and that is Andrew Winnie's idea, who he is, about running a series of uh, space themed songs and videos. And he's proposed uh, members to be the hosts, you know, he's still the best or whatever that was. We also had this idea that, you know, how SBS had these slow TV where they do the game, all the living footage, the whole moonwalk, why not, real time? <laughs> um, and once again, perhaps a, an essay may be posted, movie screening or something of that sort. So we'll keep you informed of all of that as it progresses. And um, one of the ideas we did have was maybe having a, a logo for the association for, for this year, just the market. So uh, I've been knocking around a couple of designs in conjunction with Mike and come up with this. Obviously, with the footprint and uh, just sort of merged with our logo. So, it is a draft thing that uh, knocked up a little while ago. Um, but the idea was to perhaps have it as a promotional thing for, for the Apollo 11 event and for the association. Um, you, there's a, Mike's been looking at the system, our system to host our website and our email server actually has a So, uh, I don't know what people think of that, maybe we can talk about it during the break. Um, further afield in Canberra, um, there is a group of people that used to work um, at Tiffin Villa and Sacred Creek and Parks have kind of formed an association. But they've been together for quite a while. They, they organise a 40th anniversary event, and there are other 30 people and 30 events before that, other than they were involved at that stage. Uh, to mark the Apollo 11. They said, they swore back the balloon, you know, 10 years ago, that it was going to last, all being too old, can't do it anymore, and they've, they've settled up again and they're doing this one. So they're looking at, uh, at the, trying to get a monument in Canberra built, just a mock-up that someone's knocked up there, which apparently we've got a little bit of funding to explore, so, so the idea is to mark the Australian involvement in the Apollo uh, 11 mission. There's also, uh, at the time of the moonwalk, uh, there's a lunch that you're doing up in Kent as well. So if you go to this website, you can find the details. You can even go and book for the lunch on that website. There's a link to it one of those purchasing sites. So uh, if you can get the camera, these guys, they're not getting younger and they're fascinated to talk to. Um, we were there, a bunch of, a couple of viewers were there up in the 40th and they were great. It was amazing. Very All right, so coming back to Earth, coming back to us. So once again, at this stage, we are staying with our formula for uh, fourth Monday of the month, which looks like this. And we've discussed with the meeting here, uh, December 15, 
which is another port, but obviously the port of Malone is sending it to Ukraine, so we're looking at big things at the centre. So um, we'll just see how it all pans out. Any feedback on the venue or the food or anything like that? More than welcome. Okay, so um, I'll do my propaganda thing. Once again, we are a non profit group and we rely on memberships to do all the things we do. So if you are a member, thank you very much. If you were a member, please come back. If you're not a member, please come join us. And uh, you can see Tim over there, Bill, and give more money and uh, donations correctly, etc. Alright, so tonight uh, we're going to talk about spacesuits. And thankfully, this is not what they used. <laughs> But before we go there, we've got a very special guest in the room tonight, and uh, I talked about those people that were involved in, in the Apollo program in space in the past. John Swanee has uh, kindly come up this evening, and I'm going to bring John up to have a quick chat to introduce himself and tell us what he did and why he did it. And what, if you can remember, is that right? John, thanks. Thanks. Thank Thanks very much, uh, Peter, and, and uh, folks, late, glad to see you later in the, in the room. Um, I've, I've, I've just uh, cracked 80 years of age, uh, and um, I was one of the original uh, space tracking technician and support um, people. Um, started uh, at the Aurora um, station at, um, uh, outside Canberra, another one of the, the group of, of three stations that were at... Um, uh, at Canberra, um, together with Honeysuckle Creek and the Deep Space uh, Station out of Tidbin and Belmont, which you've probably all heard of. Um, and can I just uh, I mention, in, uh, in addition to that uh, 50th, uh, what is it, uh, oh, yes. Apollo 50th um, Australia site, that probably comes out of the, um, the major group of the, of the old um, original space tracking. Um, uh, group which is at Honeysuckle Creek. John Sanderson and both. Yes, John, John Sanderson and um, Hamish Lindsay and that. Wonderful source of, of information. Honeysucklecreek.net, I think, is your ancestor of a And links to the whole of the early um, space uh, tracking stations in, in Australia. Uh, now, my actual um, association with the, with the tracking stations was relatively brief because I started at the, uh, at the beginning at Aurora um, and I felt myself, I, I didn't realise it at the time, but looking back I felt so privileged um, that I could work firstly in, in an environment that, that I just loved. I'd, I'd um, done my initial uh, training in electronics at um, uh, with the ABC television and actually managed to, um, to also start up the Ripon Lane television station um, back in its early days in the, in the late 50s. So I've covered some ground in, in the early days and then, then people on. But um, from, from the ABC, uh, I was lucky enough to get selected from um, the staff at uh, Aurora. Uh, Aurora was the, um, what they call the state end, the Space Tracking and Data Acquisition Network. And we were around the clock seven days a week uh, supporting the um, scientific satellites that were going up at that time because of all the basic um, scientific data that needed to be um, acquired and analysed to make um, groundwork for the, uh, for the uh, orbital flights, uh, both unmanned and, and then uh, later manned. So there was a tremendous amount of work done there uh, with little, little recognition, but nevertheless, um, that, was, uh, uh, that was what I did. Um, I'd been looking over the fence at Honeysuckle Creek and uh, they seemed to be the privileged uh, people there. They were seem to work day shifts most of the time and do training routines and, and get sent off to America for, uh, for further training uh, uh, courses. Uh, and, and that night I'd, I'd actually applied for a transfer to get there, but there was contractual uh, arrangements between the, um, um, the stations. The Department of Supply in those, uh, in those days was the agent, uh, the, the um, Australian government agency between NASA and the actual operating um, stations, which were actually run by commercial operators. Um, but I wasn't allowed to transfer there, but after a couple of years 
uh, I was allowed to transfer to the Carnarvon station right over the west, uh, west coast, which is some of the current doing wiped out from the, the cycling at the moment's coming down the coast. Um, so I, was, I spent four years over there, and that was in the period uh, 60, 68 to 72, and that legally coincides with the, with the moon landing. So uh, again, it was just a, a, a tremendous experience to, uh, to, um, uh, to provide the support, uh, be involved in a, in a NASA organisation. And NASA <coughs> is an absolutely uh, prime example of, of a well disciplined organisation. It was really sensational the way that they had um, analysed everything that should happen, that could happen, what the alternatives were, and uh, uh, what could, uh, uh, what should be done. And we finished up with flight manuals for every every flight, um, and as as to every every moment of the of the days of, of every mission uh, was planned, and the alternatives and the backups, and we did simulations after simulations. <coughs> I was in the uh, uh, in the computer section uh, there, which is the interface essentially between the um, the unified S band receiver systems through the uh, the big uh, dishes and um, the telemetry uh, extractors out of all those streams are multi multi stream uh, telemetry. Um, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the unified S, S band um, downlinks were uh, um, the all day. I think they had about 12, 12 different channels um, of everything from high speed. Uh, Vehicle data, uh, biomed, um, uh, just uh, trajectory uh, data, responses from from radar links from the ground stations, uh, and things like that. Uh, and uh, I was uh, senior technician and then supervising technician of the of the uh, uh, tracking star of the computer section at, uh, at Carnarvon uh, when I finished. But then um, the uh, the last flights came up through up to 15 and 16, and then it stopped. And they decided they weren't even going to have the last three uh, manned missions, so they just saved one and peed it out. Uh, my family called, uh, called me back to, to Melbourne, and um, uh, that was the end of my space tracking. Uh, so they went into, uh, uh, into um, uh, computer, uh, mainframe commercial uh, computing uh, for 20 years after that. But, Certainly was a, a, a wonderful time. Um, really, really thrilled to have done that. And uh, I was just saying to, to Peter that I was hoping actually to bring up my grandson in law uh, uh, to, uh, to come because um, at, at my birthday party I met him for the first time. And when he heard, he heard about the experiences that I had coming on 50, 55 years uh, ago, um, he, he was just thrilled and bombarded me with, uh, with questions uh, about uh, how we did this and how we did that and things like that. And uh, I, I was just tremendously uh, pleased that uh, young people these days um, have, have been uh, become involved in inquiring about that when I think in the general, uh, the general um, field there's, there's not terribly much interest in, uh, in space work at all. Anyway, that's that's that short story of, of, of me and my career. Thanks, Thank you very much. So John's gonna stay around for the break, so have a chat with him and things. And I'm gonna twist his arm and see if we can get him back for like a special gigabit presentation, multimedia integration. At some point we do that. We might buy you a drink. But, yeah, thank you so much for doing that. It was completely uh, unprompted, so Good, good show. Right, let's uh, flip over to our other thing.
So now um, we're going to be doing a little bit of a look back at Apollo. We've done this over the last few months. People have been here in the past. Um, we're looking back at Apollo 50 years from well, 50 years in the future. So we're calling it the Footsteps to the Moon and the Countdown to Apollo 11. Lots of these old artworks. Uh, but, uh, we're going to have you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the series basically we're providing a monthly report based on sort of stuff that was happening in that particular month 50 years ago. So I'll be looking at January 20th, 1969. Um, so obviously it's going to culminate in a July meeting in, uh, in July of this year. So. Um, we're also going to be having three different uh, special focus episodes. We we'll look at uh, actually next month's going to be a cracker. We're going to be looking at the uh, Soviet space effort, moon effort, uh, which there wasn't a whole lot of information in the West about, but they could kind of put things pretty quiet. But we've got our agents on the on the uh, on the on the go for that. So they're going to be giving us an inside report. Um, then we're going to be looking at uh, the Australian activities. Um, we're going to certainly include all of that week in that. Um, what was happening in terms of creeping parks and uh, the community with the gentleman that created a, an experiment that actually flew to the moon in Australia. So that's fascinating. So we'll hopefully incorporate that in some way. That's in April. And then in June, we're going to be looking at the, um, the decision to. to. the bear money. Yeah. <laughs> decision to the bear money. Yeah. Um, Decision to have the architecture of the new mission the way it came about. Is it Kalmari? Is it Kalmari? Oh, I Involve time travel. So I uh, hope you've uh, got a good stomach because it can be quite dramatic for people. So, first of all, we're going to start off in 2019. Two great leaders of the world discussing the environment and the world in politics. But it's not the first time to check that. This isn't the time for it. Now, look, every slowly into the centre of the Chatting back 50 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and now we're back in 1969. And two great leaders discussing the world. Things really don't change here. Alright, so what was happening in the world in 69? Well, um, there was a committee uh, set up by the US Air Force to investigate uh, UFOs. And um, they submitted, uh, they called the Condon Committee and they released its report essentially saying there's nothing. Um, they basically said that nothing has come from the study of UFOs in the past 21 years that has added scientific knowledge, careful consideration of the record as it is available to us to lead us to conclude that further extensive study of UFO, UFOs probably cannot be justified. So basically, they end up cancelling after that. Uh, January 14, the USS Enterprise had a major fire on board. It killed a bunch of people, 28 people, 314 in Asia. 
And in January 17, there's an antitrust lawsuit by the US Justice Department against IBM, charging them with monopolising the digital computer industry. John, I know you better. Um, the suit will continue until 1982. And then we've got the technology moved on, I think. Um, elsewhere, January 20, Tricky Dick, oh, Mr. Richard Nixon was sworn in as the president. Um, this is interesting. It's lucky for me doing this research. An assassination attempt was made on Leonid Brezhnev. Um, but he was unheard. The shots killed the driver and bloody injured several celebrated cosmonauts. I wish I was here. Do you know anything about that? Yeah. Okay. Well, we might find out a bit more about that next week. At least my helmet. Was he? Yeah. Right. The theory is that they mistook. So uh, the, the attack was captured in the blackout is maintained. I don't know when the rest played out. Do you know? I don't know when it was. Not long after. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. I'm sure the CIA might have been trying to search like that. And uh, in Vietnam, obviously Vietnam was raging on in 1968. So there was this uh, Battle of Hat Beach. Um, it lasted 78 days and uh, it was fairly successful for the Allies. Um, and uh, the road that walked back, but raised on, so uh, still happening and uh, in tragedy. Alright, how many important culture news? The Beatles gave what was turned out to be the last public performance. Um, they did it on the roof of the Apple building, lasted for 42 minutes. And um, the police were called and eventually said, sorry guys, we have to finish it off because it's a disturbing amount of Well, John Lennon quoted at the end, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves and we'll have to be past the early edition. So it's a quick listen. It was captured, it was captured in the blackout, it was maintained. I don't know when the rest played out, do you know? I don't know when it was... Not long after. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. I'm sure the CIA might have been trying to search like that. And uh, in Vietnam, obviously Vietnam was raging on in 1968. So there was this uh, Battle of Hat Beach. Um, it lasted 78 days and uh, it was fairly successful for the Allies. Um, and uh, the road that walked back, but raged on. So uh, still happening and uh, in tragedy. All right, how many important culture news? The Beatles gave what was turned out to be the last public performance. Um, they did it on the roof of the Apple building, lasted for 42 minutes. And um, the police were called and eventually said, sorry guys, we have to finish it off because it's a disturbing amount of Well, John Lennon quoted at the end, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves and we'll have to be past the early edition. So let's have a quick listen. Uh, so what else is happening in Australia? There's big bushfires here. Nothing seems to change in Victoria. 17 people died in a grass fire. Uh, 
and you want to do the cars and put this highway in if you want. Johnny Famishon becomes a world featherweight champion when he defeats Cuban Jose Legra. He was out in Alpha Airport in London. So here is your top 10, your top 10 in, uh, in Australia. Go all up the country. In, uh, some, probably some of us have got those records at home still. No? No? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so what was happening actually with Apollo now? So this is, as I kind of mentioned over the last few months, there were just so many things that were happening at the same time. And I've only just taken a tiny little percentage of them over the last few months. And the same with this, this, this one. You know. um, the, uh, the lunar module, the Assassin Station lunar module, was at the Bet Page Assembly plant, getting ready to be transported to KSC. Out at KSC, the Apollo uh, 9 Saturn V staff was rolling out for the vehicle that was going to be launched <coughs> January 9, the actual Apollo 11 crew were officially announced, introduced to the world, Buzz, Neil, and Mike. And back at Kennedy State Space Center, there were so many things happening. Uh, Apollo 9 out on the pad. Uh, Apollo 10's lunar module is preparing for maintenance of the spacecraft. Um, January 12, the descent stage of Apollo 11's lunar module uh, was, was arrived at Kennedy Space Center. Have you seen that before? Just made it so and January 9, now the, now the Apollo 9 that I was out of the pad, so the crew were out there doing um, emergency egress training. Uh, so it's actually quite fascinating. You see them, they, they don these emergency oxygen packs, plug them in, and then they take off down the, um, the emergency escape uh, elevator or the, or the, uh, the slide wire device. Apparently, in the, someone mentioned in the video they had a camera obviously there, and Apollo 8, apparently um, Frank Borman, when he was doing this, actually fell over trying to get that thing on his head. So, this had practice for him. So, uh, Apollo 11's command module was finally finished and ready for shipping out to KSC, and it arrived there on the 22nd of January along with its service module. 26th, I mentioned before, the Apollo 9 crew were doing these uh, emergency egress training, etc. So these guys actually, uh, not all, but uh, some of them, are, well, not, no, not the crew, but uh, some one of the astronauts, Stu Russo, and a lot of people jumped in the actual slide wire thing and did the, it's hard to see if there's actual cable that runs all the way around there, and they would jump in, come across the access arm, jump in there, hit the button, and slide down there, then they would go and walk into these um, tank things and drive off and do this and do that. Interestingly, years later, the shuttle system had no such thing. There was no way of getting the crew out. They had a slide wire with a basket. Not oh, initially, they didn't have a four No, I don't. All right, in January 3, um, so there's a whole lot of management type things happening. Uh, Apollo 9 um, continue on schedule while they're out in the space. Over the store already uh, in the BAB. 15 to 17, um, Apollo 9 was verified, the emergency egress test, etc., were done, no completely complete. The 19th to the 22nd, they had the Apollo 9 rendered flight readiness review, uh, readiness test. Um, one day delay in the testing caused the loss of air conditioning for a computer. The hatch and the side windows of the spacecraft have been modified to overcome the fogging effect that they experienced in Apollo 8. People might recall seeing those fogging and traffic that was fogging up the windows in Apollo 8. 24 to 29, recovery training exercise out in the Gulf with the uh, Apollo 9 go. 24, the, the command service module readiness review board convening. And they basically reported on all the different vehicles ready for the next few missions. 31st, um, this is interesting, 30 small aluminium, aluminium fittings were replaced on the, all the lunar modules. Um, 
and reinforced due to the pull out of possibility of crack on stress or erosion. Now, this is very um, exclusive. So I don't know if you can get the book, but this is going to hurt the best. <coughs> this was a thing. No, not the cat. Does anyone know where that's from? That's Star Trek. Star Trek. Gary Seddon was it or something? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, here's how the story goes. Um, it, the uh, S4B stage of the case here, this is the one for Apollo 11, and it was in a low beta test cell. Uh, uh, one of the engineers, Hugh Nichols, discovered a note plastered in a mirror in the men's bathroom which read, I fixed the vehicle, you won't find it in time. This happened. Um, now this was shortly after McDonald Douglas uh, strike was placed and so they were under suspicion of it Called the FBI, interrogated everybody, no one knew anything about it. Um, every system was retested using their basic testing, no faults were found. However, they still weren't comfortable that you know, a little nip bit of wire or something could be imperceptible to their your standard testing might be sitting there and it could cause a disaster. So uh, they were, um, there was really no way to be certain. So, now this is the configuration of the vehicle assembly building. This is where the final stack of the vehicle is. This is the low boat, low boat area here, which is where the stage is coming for the initial uh, you know, testing and configuration to, to be Stack. So they, FBI were able to identify the part with their fingerprints uh, because it was stuck on by a bit of soap. Um, the prints were those of a senior McDonald Douglas manager. Apparently, he and they got he and some of the guys had gone out for some what they call three martini lunch. <laughs> Came back and they decided a bit of fun. Of course, he was terminated immediately and. Uh, Initially he denied it. And, uh, so, um, however, the chief engineer for the vehicle operation at the time still considers to this day the biggest nightmare in, in the whole space of Now, that, once again, I wasn't able to find much reference to this you know, in your new, normal Google searches and online. However, this is contained in this book, which has recently been released, and it's a fantastic book. It's getting nerdy, which is kind of, it's out there graphically. Um, it's called Can't Have a Loop. It goes through in a chronological order all the stages and steps for the different vehicles and the different um, systems for the for the uh, for the Apollo program, particularly in the Apollo. So that's how. Yeah. So I've got the bookmarker there. If you want to read the entire segment, it's only about two and a half, two and a half pages. Get the full details. I mean, crazy summarize it here. Um, please do so. This is the book. Um, page one eighty three. So the book's well worth reading um, if you uh, have uh, had an interest in that. Um, not just for that subject, but we also. Now, um, some of us have been to the BAB recently, in fact, Mike and I were there just recently, and that test stand is actually still in the vehicle semi building as it was, except it's down bottom. So they still sit there. So it's kind of must be Right, so, just in case anyone moves here. Oh, I wouldn't have loved it. You can rebuild it. So uh, we have called tonight uh, Bras in Space, fashion in the Apollo space suit. And rather than me going through a 38 minute description of it, I thought I'd just turn to a DVD. So stand by and we'll do that. I think it covered it quite nicely.